Hey guys, back at it again with a little Echo 2511T. So at the end of my last video where I was explaining porting this little beast, I talked about the timing advance and I talked about I wasn't sure if it was actually necessary or not. So I did some experimenting and so the stock width of the key is right here. I went ahead and took off 44 thousandths in all the videos you saw. And now actually it cut pretty good at 44 thousandths, but to me it sounded like the timing was a little too much. So what you can do with these keys, you can file one side, flip it over, go back to stock, or flip it over and file the other side as well. So I went ahead and did that. And that time I took 27 thousandths off. And I actually found I lost power at that width. So just for the heck of it, because I feel like tinkering with this saw, I ordered two new keys. I'm gonna go ahead and try something in between. I'm gonna go with 35 thousandths and see if that's better. I, I honestly think 35 thousandths is gonna be the sweet spot where you're not too far and you are enough. So 35 thousandths at the moment is what I think is key. So I'll go ahead and make another video after I do that. I don't know when I'll make cuts with this again. Not uh, real crazy about it. You know, I've been, I just got done kind of building this uh, and porting this 288 XP. It's a be super clean, super powerful saw. Uh, it is for sale. Haven't quite posted it yet, but and then after that I got this 066 gonna be a screamer as well but anyways if you're looking for the part numbers got them from parts tree that's for the key if you want to if you want to order one just in case you think you need an extra not a bad idea but while I was ordering parts I went ahead and bought the spalling spike too and here's the part number for that looks to be the same as this one so I'll report back. Like I said, I'm going to do 35 thousandths off the key. See what happens. Forgot to add one thing. So when doing a timing advance, if the key is not molded, like uh, a lot of the Huskies are, which is super annoying, take the key out, put it in a pair of vice grips, put that in your vise, take your raker gauge file, file away. It's kind of hard to explain to people via text. So here you go. All right, so one more little add-on to this video. So I I put the saw away, then I remembered, oh yeah, I was gonna put this spike on here. So, oops. Goes like that. Well, there's no hole, there's no, it's not threaded in here. There's nothing in there. There's no threads. So it's like, well, Grab some hardware from my bin, and I thought, oh, this will go perfect. It's actually too small. A normal size socket head you find on most Husqvarna's is actually too big. That's probably the right one, but it's not tapped. So then I'm wondering, well, what did they use? Did they use a little screw like this? That, it might work, but you know, this is also plastic. I'll also be worried it might crack that or not even hold up. And then I thought, oh shoot, maybe it just goes on the clutch cover. And no, not that either. If anybody knows the answer to this, let me know. I'm going to get on the forums and see if somebody knows. Because I just assumed, oh, I buy a spike for this saw. I'm just going to bolt it up. Or do I have to tap it now? Which I could do, not a big deal, but just surprised. 